Okay, so welcome back. Uh, this is the fourth uh, module, so fourth video for week uh, five. We will continue our discussion on uh, health impact, environmental impact associated with plastic pollution. Uh, so far, we looked into the marine debris, uh, how the plastic goes in there and also the impact on uh, marine life. And uh, we looked at some of the issues with uh, the land uh, population as well. In the last video, if you remember, uh, we had uh, uh, we were discussing about uh, the impact on animals like cows and uh, 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 bull. You saw one last video on a, a bull where several uh, kgs of plastic were recovered from his body. So those are the issues. So once we have uh, this plastic being into the body, either uh, directly or indirectly, what is the health impact and what is the overall environmental impact. So, we will continue that discussion uh, in this video and in the next video which will be the last two videos for this particular week. So, getting further the what how uh, it is going to affect on humans. See, we are we are always uh, a I all uh, I think I say that many times that uh, we are one of the selfish uh, species on this planet. Every time when we th think about uh, any environmental uh, impact, first of all we think about what will happen to us and that is why may, even the terminology used is human health and environment. That is what you will see in most of the textbooks in terms of any chemicals. So, let us look at what will be the potential effect on humans uh, whether uh, because since we are on the top of food chain, uh, many of these things uh, will come to us uh, uh, directly mostly indirectly through fish, through, through milk and through other species as well. And uh, so, Effect on humans, uh, it does, there are a lot of additives used in manufacturing of plastics and uh, plasticizer for example, uh, which uh, provided flexibility to PVC. Uh, the three most commonly cited plastic additives are bisphenol A, which is BPA. Uh, many times you see that uh, plastic containers uh, labeled as BPA free. So, they do not have BPA, BPA we will talk about that, I uh, will also show you a small video on uh, uh, like a health impact related to BPA that has been reported. Then thalates, uh, here P is silent, uh, thalates and flame retardants. So, these are the three major uh, category, uh, bisphenol A is uh, used, thalates are used and flame retardants are used and all of these three categories has been documented to have adverse human health impact which is uh, already there in, uh, in the literature. So, which uh, so bit what are their uh, impact? Uh, it, so, these are the additives and their what are the ill effects? So, bisphenol A uh, acts as endocrine disruptors in humans. So, it impacts our endocrine system. So, it acts as a endocrine disruptors can cause thyroid cancer, uh, osteoporosis, hypo and hypertension. So, it ca causes both hypo as well as the hypertension. So, that is what the bisphenol A, we are really worried about B BPA and uh, uh, this uh, that is why many many plastic these days are trying to be away from uh, uh, BPA. So, they do not use BPA anymore, bisphenol A, the BPA is a short form for B B bisphenol A. Thalates or plasticizers, they impact the reproductive system, uh, malformation, development disorders, causes uh, pulmonary system effects including asthma allergies. So, that is what uh, thalates uh, are known for. Flame retardants, it impacts on immune system, it can be fatal and uh, on child development, it can cause cancer or uh, neurologic dysfunction as well. So, uh, these three are the broad categories of uh, 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 additives used in plastics and they, these are their uh, ill effects. So, we are always worried about uh, things leaching from plastic and getting into our food, especially if you are using as a food container or when the plastic goes into the surface water or the ocean, things leaching from plastic, say BPA leaching from plastic getting into the water or uh, say if you are using uh, uh, even these days, uh, uh, the, we use a lot of water bottles uh, which uh, for drinking water throughout the day and if we have water there for 5-6 hours. Uh, touching the, the plastic surface, if BPA is leaching or these chemicals are leaching from the uh, plastic to my water 
and then it, it's a problem. It's, it's a, it can lead to over, over several years of consumption of water, sim water with little bit of uh, these chemicals can create an adverse health impact. And uh, it's even for the small babies, we are using plastic bottles these days. So that's what uh, for feeding bottles. And they, there you see a more like a, you will, um, many of those bottles claim to be BPA free. Whether they are BPA free or not, we don't, uh, we, of course, it needs to be tested out to find out whether they are BPA free. We are, so that's, those are the issues that we have to deal with. So where the BPA is used, uh, if you look at the bisphenol A, used in uh, uh, in your uh, uh, it's a, it's a container so these are the ones which uh, cre has uh, creates uh, have uh, uh, bpa presence uh, in uh, different types of containers uh, you have uh, canisters measuring cups uh, beverage bottles uh, mixing pitchers cake keepers uh, steamers and uh, polycarbonate sip beverage bottles where uh, with the straw or uh, another uh, bottle. So, these are all these can potentially contain a BPA unless it is BPA free and we already talked about its effect uh, can lead to liver disease, autism, irritation of mucous membrane, uh, dermatitis which is a uh, skin disorder, irritation of mucous membrane, upper respiratory tract, obesity, diabetes and oncological disease which can lead to cancer and other stuff. So, that is the typical uh, structure for bisphenol like two benzene rings with uh, OH groups uh, at the end and then CH3 and CH2 CH3 groups in the middle. So, that is how uh, its, uh, its structure is, uh, this is how it looks like. So, this is uh, what the bisphenol A where they are found and what is its uh, potential impacts are in terms of uh, ill effect. Thalates, uh, it is used uh, in uh, different kind of materials, toys, uh, cosmetics, bottles, uh, different containers, uh, they, they use thalates and the risk is uh, we talked about it earlier, the reproductive system and other issues associated with that. As the level of thalates goes up, uh, the risk of miscarriage is more, so you do not want uh, too much exposure of thalates. Uh, flame retardants is essentially used uh, to retard the flame as the name suggests. So, anything which any equipment or anything which gets heated up, uh, which can uh, we are worried about things catching fire, we have flame retardants there. So, we will have electronics, uh, carpet padding, uh, foam baby items, chairs, kitchen appliances. So, anything where we want that if there is any, any fire, it gets uh, any, uh, it, it should get retarded, it should not propagate. Uh, we use flame retardants. So, flame retardants uh, the way it has a ill effect is it closes the placenta and uh, so even from it can go from a mother to the baby. Babies are born with flame retardants in their bodies. So, and uh, flame retardants also accumulate in breast milk exposing nursing infants. So, small babies uh, can get it through the breastfeed as well. Uh, they may get it through the placenta, but also through the breastfeed. Uh, more time on the floor, uh, when they are going around on the floors in the carpet padding, uh, we use a lot of car many, many, especially in the developed countries, the concept of using carpets are there. Things, many people are moving from carpets to uh, kind of uh, wooden floor now, but still carpets are used. Uh, uh, if you go to Delhi airport, the entire airport has been carpeted, uh, especially T3. So, it is uh, more uh, time on the floor. If you have more time on the carpeted floor and then you have this hand to mouth activity where the kid is touching things on the carpet then putting his hand in the mouth uh, means young children have higher ingestion of flame retardants contaminated house dust because this uh, from the uh, carpet padding and other sources you will have uh, uh, flame retardants in the dust and when the kid has the tendency of touching things and then putting it into the mouth it becomes uh, it becomes an issue in terms of uh, impact on their uh, on their body so they get exposed to these flame retardants now if you look at uh, some of these uh, pc uh, for, uh, contaminants uh, concentration in different parts of the world so this is uh, as per the us epa report of 2016 uh, concentration of bisphenol a uh, polychlorinated biphenol which is uh, if you look at their concentration and we do see a pretty high concentration uh, ranging from close to 3000 uh, I think these are in uh, micrograms per liter 
uh, it uh, goes all the way in some places it is uh, pretty low and but we see a wide variety of ranges of concentrations showing up in terms of uh, polychlorinated biphenyls at different parts of the world. So, the reason for putting this uh, graph up there is just to show you that it is not only a localized problem, it is it's a global problem and some places it is more, some places it is less based on how much uh, uh, plastics are being used or uh, how much uh, this, there are other sources of uh, polychlorinated biphenyls as well. So, as you can see it is pretty much everywhere uh, around the world where you see these things uh, showing up. And uh, similarly, uh, if you compare that uh, with the DDT and it is uh, metabolite, uh, you see that uh, DDT also kind of shows up throughout the world. So, uh, polychlorinated biphenyl has kind of similar uh, exposure as compared to DDT, DDT which we have been talking about for quite some time for almost uh, 4 decades now. And uh, so, this piece, this uh, polychlorinated biphenyl could be the next DDT where we need to really worried about in terms of its uh, uh, control as well as uh, remediation uh, over time or in globally at uh, throughout the world. Then polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon that is another one which uh, does so up uh, here you see that in some places you see the concentration to be much higher. So, all these are from the US EPA report which is there in your uh, uh, reading material. So, here as you can see that there are uh, uh, PAH. Uh, some places the data is not have not presented uh, that does not mean it does not have it, it is actually the data was not available. So, data is not available for those particular areas. So, similarly for India we do not have the data in terms of what is the total pH is there into the environment going from, uh, uh, from, dif from uh, different uh, industrial and other uh, activities happening in the country. So, if you look at uh, in terms of uh, where they use, what is the effect? and where in which type of plastic it is used. So, bisphenol A it is a plasticizer, it is used as a liner uh, for certain cans and other stuff. It uh, mimics estrogen, so endocrine disruption compound and used in PVC and PC uh, that is where you see them uh, used. Thalates uh, are plasticizer, also artificial fragrance, it interferes with testosterone, sperm mobility. So, that is why the reproduction issues, it is used in polystyrene and PVC. Persistent organic pollutants which is also known as POPs, uh, it is uh, POPs is used uh, in pesticides, flame retardants etcetera and it has a possible neurological and reproductive damage and it is used in all plastics. So, POPs are there in all plastic. Uh, dioxins which is produced in manufacture of PVC during waste incineration, uh, carcinogen interferes with testosterone, uh, it is used in all plastics. Uh, then uh, non ill phenol which is uh, anti static anti fox surfactants used in deter in detergents it mimics estrogen also used in pvc pipes pvc polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon uh, whenever you burn fossil fuel its form it is uh, development and neurological ne reproductive toxicity it has been found again in all plastic uh, pcbs which is polychlorinated biphenyls uh, which is electronics manufacturers interferes with thyroid hormone again it's in all plastic uh, sterin monomer which is a breakdown product uh, carcinogen forms DNA affects DNA used in polyesterine. So, these are uh, different uh, uh, type of roxy compounds and where in different types of plastics it is used and its impact uh, in terms of uh, on, uh, on health. So, if you look at uh, impact of plastic waste on human body. Uh, it uh, can create headache uh, based on different chemicals that we just looked into uh, which is there in different types of plastic. It can create headaches, dizziness, unconsciousness, thyroid it can impact thyroid uh, swelling. Uh, so, thyroid, lungs problem, diarrhea, vomiting, uh, birth effect, uh, infertility, hormone changes, skin disease liver dysfunction, breathing difficulties, irritation in eyes and vision failure. So, as you can see it has a variety of impact for different uh, body system, but thing is that it is again it, it, it will happen when we have mismanagement of plastic waste. It is not that if I am using a plastic bottle, say if I have this plastic bottle sitting in front of me 
uh, from day to morning to evening, I am not getting exposed to any of these chemicals as, as, if, uh, uh, as of uh, now. But once say if the water inside this bottle, if uh, this bisphenol A or thiolates or different compounds which is present in this plastic bottle, if it if it's present because some of these bottles uh, are uh, supposed to be, be like BPA free and all that. But if it is present and if it leaches into this water and when I consume this water, I am getting exposed to it. And if I am consumed to this water, this kind of water every day for a longer period of uh, say few years, few decades down the line, then only you get these kind of sickness. It is not that you like you consume water today and tomorrow you will have this sickness. So, it is uh, and this is one source, there are other sources of these similar contaminants showing up uh, into the environment which you can be exposed to as well. So, the major problem comes is of course, we have to make sure that things does not leach here. So, that is the uh, design problem, if it can be designed properly, so things does not leach. But at the same time, once this bottle is used up, once say the bottle gets a leak or something happens to this bottle, I throw it, it becomes a plastic waste. At that time, we need to make sure that this plastic waste is handled properly, so that these chemicals which could be present in as a plasticizers and other things in here does not get into the environment. So, does not get into the, if it gets into the surface water, things may leach, if it gets into the ocean, things may leach out. So, we need to prevent that leaching by having a proper plastic waste management framework for every city, town and uh, state of course, in, uh, in the country. So, if you can do that and that becomes part of again municipal solid waste. So, this municipal solid waste management rules and plastic waste management rules has to be looked into in tandem where we can try to manage this plastic waste properly. If we can do the management properly, if we can recycle things properly, then we can minimize the risk from these uh, different chemicals present in these, uh, in these different types of plastics which is out there, which is used for different applications uh, uh, in, uh, in our day to day life. So, that is uh, looking at different plastic waste into the ocean. So, we will look at this particular video, which is uh, this one was done by uh, uh, you, I think USGS if I am correct and it also involves some of the researchers from different universities in US, where they majorly focus on uh, bisphenol A in terms of its uh, adverse impact and uh, how much bisphenol A is making into the water body, uh, which is uh, one of the major source is coming from the plastic pollution. So, let us look at this video and then we will discuss uh, uh, the issues around it and it is mostly focused on uh, from an angle of human health and which you will see. It is like something out of science fiction. Unsettling transformations are sweeping across the planet and clue by clue investigators are assembling a new picture of earth. They suspect we have entered a time of faster global change than any human being has ever witnessed. But we can rise to the challenge, alter the course. It is up to all of us to confront these strange days on planet Earth. Each of us now produce more than 1,500 pounds of trash a year and the fraction that's plastic is going nowhere but up. If enough of us change what we do in simple ways, we can reduce the threat plastic poses to the ocean. Still, when it comes to plastic, out of sight shouldn't mean out of mind. Fred Vom Saul of the University of Missouri and Don Tillett of the U.S. Geological Survey live and work in the nation's heartland. Alarmed by rising numbers of wild animals found with bizarre developmental and reproductive problems, they have joined a national effort to find the cause. The prime suspects include pesticides, the residue of birth control pills and other drugs in treated wastewater, and a compound found in many familiar plastics, bisphenol A. The problem with chemicals such as bisphenol A is it breaks out of the plastic and leaches into water. Studies show that from water, this chemical can get into animals, and there it can act like a dose of the female sex hormone, estrogen. 
Too much estrogen can disrupt the endocrine system, and that's been linked to a wide range of health impacts, including gender bending. One critical unanswered question is at what level of exposure these effects occur. With bisphenol A, we're talking about extremely small quantities of this chemical getting into the environment. Samples drawn from this stream had only 30 parts per trillion. Vamsal is worried because studies show tiny amounts of bisphenol A can derail early cell development in mice. And if mice are vulnerable, might people be as well? Recently, Vamsal tested clear plastic baby bottles to see if they release bisphenol A. He devised the simplest of experiments. Let distilled water sit in brand new bottles for 24 hours and then test it. Every one released bisphenol A. Curious, he then decided to see what happens when the same baby bottles are run through an ordinary dishwasher, which heats them to 140 degrees. Some of these bottles, by the time we had washed them 10 times, were leaching 10 times more bisphenol A than they had before they had been washed. The plastics industry vigorously disputes any danger to children from the chemical. They cite the continued blessing of the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. But the Japanese are cutting back in their use of bisphenol A, and recent independent studies have motivated the FDA to take a fresh look. So as you saw, this, is, uh, uh, this was uh, done by National Geographic and with uh, this particular website, thinkbeyondplastic.org. So uh, as you listen to those researchers, uh, they collected the water sample from some certain streams and they were looking at uh, the BPA concentration in that water. And uh, later on in the video, they were looking at uh, the plastic bottles uh, which were used to feed babies. And uh, so they found all of them uh, actually le having a leaching of uh, BPA. And when they washed it uh, using uh, uh, that washing machine at, uh, uh, at a higher, like a wa warmer temperature, uh, warm, warm water, they found that uh, as they were more and more washing, it was actually leading to more and more leachability. So after 10 wash, if I remember correctly, it says, kind of says that uh, 10 times more leaching happened. So this BPA leaching from these plastic bottles is of concern because uh, it is uh, showing a negative impact on uh, mice. Uh, so it is, it is uh, extrapolated that it will be have a negative impact on human bodies as well. So, so that was just one example and similar, similar uh, studies have been done with different chemicals uh, which kind of uh, uh, you, will, you must have encountered in different courses that you have taken, especially if you have taken any course related uh, towards uh, toxic, toxicology and other stuff. So these, are, uh, these do have uh, as a problem in terms of uh, human health problem and uh, also it's a problem for other uh, aquatic uh, species that things uh, do leach which we are talking about. So there is, a, there is an issue of uh, plastic uh, uh, design of plastic products where to make sure that things does not really leach, the harmful chemicals should not leach from plastic to the body, to the food or uh, uh, to the drinks so that it becomes a problem especially from the food point of view. And there have been some report also that when you use a plastic container for microwave, there also you see the leaching got enhanced uh, because again for the warmer, warmer temperature. So we need to kind of uh, do some work in that area to make sure that those plastic uh, uh, containers are safe. And if we use them, uh, if we can phase out them gradually, that may be, uh, a, may be a welcome step, but at the same time, we need to make sure that whatever is the replacement we are going to use is, is better, better from a human health point of view, better from an environmental point of view. So kind of having a long, some sort of LCA study, life cycle analysis study of the alternatives will help in, to assess which one is better, uh, which one is a better option. So when we talk about uh, contaminants uh, getting from plastic uh, into different media and then from the different media the plastic uh, will, uh, these contaminants will go into the organisms as well. So here uh, what, when we talk about uh, things going into the different uh, organisms, most marine organisms obtain contaminants from plastic by ingesting plastic debris which is mostly microplastic. So this microplastics uh, uh, they 
they ingest that microplastics they think that uh, they are plankton species and that is what creates the confusion uh, ad adsorbed contaminant can leach into digestive fluids things can uh, and can be transferred to another tissues. So, as plantain species from the foundation for the every food web any threat to them can have serious effect. So, if they are uh, um, it is uh, it's getting impacted the plantain species are getting impacted. So, that will have a kind of food chain impact where things will go into the higher level of the food chain. Toxicants may bioaccumulate, bioaccumulate means it will kind of build up uh, in the tissues uh, usually for the lipophilic chemicals. Uh, lipophilic means something which uh, has affinity for uh, lipids uh, for fats in the body. So, it is lipophilic and then it ad adsorbs to that particular uh, site in our body. If it is lipophobic phobic, uh, that means phobia of, uh, of lipids, so it will not adsorb. So, since many of these uh, uh, contaminants are lipophilic, they try to bioaccumulate, uh, produce high tissue toxicants concentration and uh, the concentration also increase within the food change by biomagnification because things go from a smaller species to higher species and then the concentration bio uh, it uh, gets increased. So, uh, there is a bio uh, magnification there. So, con contaminants within the food, uh, food web is prevalent everywhere and even after non-marine species such as polar bear and humans. So, this uh, contaminant does uh, keep on going up in uh, different species and then humans being uh, kind of uh, being on the top of the species chain uh, end up uh, getting exposed to it as well. So, it is just same thing which we just talked about if you put it in a pictorial way which was done in this particular uh, report which is uh, referenced at the bottom over here uh, where uh, you can uh, again these uh, many of these reports will be there, but this is kind of uh, one of the report which must be you will you will get a copy of that as part of reading material uh, for uh, for this week or the week uh, uh, for this I think probably this for this week only. So, as you can see the plastic pieces uh, uh, or plastic and other pieces are smaller those plastic uh, uh, microplastics are being consumed by this uh, uh, small organisms which is being eaten up by the fish and from the smaller fish getting eaten by the bigger fish and the bigger fish goes to kind of becomes the food for us and uh, we see those uh, plastic getting there. So, as you can see there were a small small microplastic which got accumulated over here and then the concentration increased over here because it eats many of those fish and then from here the concentration kind of increases in a human's body as well because things are bioaccumulating. And uh, so, that is one uh, for the uh, fish route and then birds and turtles feeds at the surface of the patch and they also consumes many of these microplastics which uh, again uh, with microplastics they are also getting different contaminants different chemicals which are present on those microplastic into their body as well. So, in terms of uh, in California and Indonesia they found that recent some study was done uh, where they found one quarter of the fish sample from fish markets in California and Indonesia contain plastic pieces and fibers in their guts. So, the plastic pieces and fibers are already showing up in the into the into the in in this uh, fish uh, which is around 25 percent of the fish had that. So, then of course, that will lead to human exposure. Uh, there was also some study done uh, uh, will uh, uh, study finds that uh, 93 percent of bottled water has microplastics. So, 93 percent of the bottled water had uh, microplastics which you see that uh, it is showing up in 93 percent of uh, the microplastic in the water bottle. And Nestle Pure Life uh, which is there in many countries uh, had uh, has been tested in, uh, in India Bisleri uh, was tested as well Bisleri was tested and found to be my have microplastic and then uh, Germany and other countries like PepsiCo, uh, Aquafina, Aqua, Minelba, Wahana, Dasani which is again Coca Cola brand, Avion, uh, San Pellegrino, which is again uh, Nestle kind of uh, manufacturer. As you can see uh, many of these uh, bottle was found to have plastic with 325 average number of plastic particles for every liter of water sold. So, 
there were uh, two, 259 bottles from 11 brands across 9 countries. So, plastic discovery included polypropylene, nylon and polystyrene uh, tetrathalate. So, this was uh, the study done and so we are seeing microplastics uh, coming into this water bottles because the water bottles are uh, the water treatment plants are not designed to treat for these microplastics. So, they do end up in this uh, water. So, although we may consume uh, many times you consume these uh, uh, plastic bottle water thinking that they will be safe, they are better, but many, many times they are actually not. They are, it's just in a country like us is still uh, in general if you say that plastic bottle may be slightly better than the tap water, uh, in some places may be the same or even the worse. But if you look at the developed countries, uh, most of the water supply system there is much much better than the plastic water bottle what you get the water from a plastic water bottle. So, if you are in Europe or even most part of US you do not really need plastic bottle you do not really need water bottle uh, that the, the regular supply that you get is actually highly regulated uh, most of the times better quality than what you get in the plastic bottles. In developing countries like India still since we do not our water treatment system is, uh, is still not that good in all entire country. So, there are issues. Uh, so, many many places people do prefer to go for these plastic bottles, but plastic bottles are not also uh, plastic water bottles, but they are also not that great. Uh, they also have issues and uh, so in, in houses we use uh, AquaGuard and, uh, and those different water filter AquaGuard or Kent or different brands are out there. So, but that is uh, again that that gives a better water uh, ho ho hopefully. Uh, but at the same time it there is uh, and most of these filtered uh, system has lots of wastage. Uh, minimum that we have is like 1 is to 1 where uh, if you have 2 liters of water 1 liter is what you get 1 liter is uh, is the waste. So, uh, let us uh, stop here uh, with uh, these uh, discussion and then we will continue the discussion of uh, plastic impact on human health in our last video uh, for this particular week. Again any questions put it on discussion forum we will be more than happy to uh, like uh, respond to your queries, any suggestions, any uh, newer information, please share it on the discussion forum and it will be helpful for all the students. So, thank you, uh, enjoy uh, it like I hope you are enjoying this course, keep doing that and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks. Okay. So, thank you. So, this is uh, brings it to the last video, uh, this is the fourth video, this is being to the end of the fourth video of week 5. So, we will continue the same discussion in the next video, where we finish uh, the impact on human health and environment from plastic pollution. Thank you.